Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure and it's not a pleasure being here under the circumstances that we are here today. Let me remind you that the problem we're in started in 1982 when we changed the Crown Land and Forest Act. What we've done in 1982, eight, we assured the company a wood supply. That wood supply was guaranteed to them they could do all what they want in the control of the forest. What did it do? We've lost the mill in Dalhousie. We've lost the mill in Bathurst. We've lost all the mill in Miramichi. In 2002, looking at 2005, 2006, and 2006, there wasn't one mill running in Miramichi. Zero mill operating. The history of the Miramichi never was at one time in the last 200 years there was no mill running. So when you guarantee wood supply, you don't guarantee jobs. You don't guarantee industry in your community. What you guarantee is that you've lost your power and you have given all the power to somebody that will dictate to you what will take place with your forest. I don't want to talk too long, but let me thank you on behalf of the 40,000 Woodlot owners and their family. I like to thank the people, you ladies and gentlemen that are here today standing up. I like to thank the universities, people, people that are willing to stand up. The reason they're standing up is not only for themselves, it's for the future, it's for the forest, and I thank you at the bottom of my heart, the men and women at university, in DNR, in every walks of life that says, this is wrong. Well, it's good to see uh, so many people from away here. Uh, I'm an eighth generation New Brunswicker, but I had to go a little bit farther afield to find work uh, than Alberta. I had to go overseas, I spent most of my career in uh, former Soviet Union, Africa, Asia, fighting corruption. I usually describe my work as trying to fight bad guys in bad places. Well, I've come home now, and now I want to fight bad guys in good places. <laughs> like God's country, right? The Brunswick? Yeah. I also have a son called Sam. He's a ninth generation of Brunswicker, so I feel a little bit partial to the same thing, trying to bring a little bit of transparency and accountability to what goes on here. So after uh, seeing what went on in the economies in Eastern Europe, and you saw how oligarchs took over in places like Russia and elsewhere, and everybody cries and says, how terrible is that? How is that possible that an economy can be captured by a small number of political and economic interests? How is it possible that you fuse economic and political power? Right? We cry about it when it happens in Russia. Not too many crying about it here at home, is there? Yeah. yeah. Right? So what is corruption? Corruption is the misuse of entrusted power for private gain. Sound familiar? Let's not be fooled. 30% was not good. What happened when we, were, when we had 30%? We allowed the other 70% of the force to be managed based on what people thought was good forest management. What did that look like? We went out and we planted a lot of forest and we herbicided that forest. And what did it do? Over my 22 years, I can tell you what it did. And this is not pie in the sky. I flew every winter in helicopters and saw what was going on in the land base. I counted the deer. I know what happened out there. I know what's going on. This is not just pie in the sky things that some people are talking about. Herbicide kills hardwoods. And it kills hardwoods incredibly well. If you've not walked through a plantation and seen how little there is in a plantation, then you need to get out in the woods. Because her herbicides kill everything. We spray it in, uh, in uh, August and September because by then the softwood buds have closed up and it won't kill the softwoods. If we spray it at a different time, it would kill everything. And we found out from the, actually a lot of research has come out in the last few years that shows that glyphosate is two to three hundred times more toxic than we realized it was based on research 20 years ago. So there does need to be new science. People need to realize what the uh, uh, latest research says. 
because it is not pretty. We spray 13,000 hectares every year. We're told it's 1%. Oh, it's only 1%. It's one measly percent. That's 13,000 hectares. That's 32,000 acres we spray every year. It kills all deer and moose food. And we wonder why our deer yards are vacant on Crown land. You wonder why you see deer in your backyards? It's because there's not much left in the woods. This is not rocket science. <laughs> They're going to keep throwing candy at us. They're talking about a five-day moose season. That's candy to keep you shut up. Oh, well, here you go. Here's another extra couple of days. It doesn't matter because this plan, I'm telling you, 30% was not enough. And we're going to get down to 23%. You, they can give you whatever you want for seasons and for harvest and for bag limits. There's going to be no animals left on Crown land. It does not matter about that candy. <laughs> this new plan increases the amount of plantations. It increases the amount of what we call silviculture. That's a nice fancy word to say spraying herbicides that kill everything. It's going to increase. We're going to slaughter 278 deer yards. Under this new plan, they're gone forever. <laughs> this is my cookie. Everybody was supposed to bring a cookie. This is my cookie. Because it represents what's out there. You people, people need to understand these trees are massive. Okay, the stuff you see going on trucks right now, this little stuff, that's what they're cutting wherever they can get it. But the stuff that's left is huge. There's only one mill in the province that can process it. And they don't own it. What are they going to do with this big wood that we can get axe handles out of and saw logs out of? They're going to buy it at pulp wood prices and they're going to chip it. People, they need to realize what's happening with our resources. The last thing I want to say is, this issue is not about forestry. This issue is about freedom. Yeah! We have lost our freedom in this province. We will continue to have sailing of NB power, shale gas issues, forestry issues, because we as a people have lost our freedom. You need to take it back. We need to get our freedom back. And, this, and not just every four years. We need to have a voice at the table every time things like this come up. That has to change in this province. God bless.